Greetings, it's Diane the Creative Inkster. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, and we're going to do some Technique Tuesday stuff. We're going to play with some of our stamp and write markers, something that I haven't played with in a long time. And you can use these same techniques with any other markers that are water-based. I would not recommend these for your stamp and blends or for Copic markers uh, because these are more for water-based type markers. So if you're here watching live, please leave me a comment. Let me know where you're coming from. Do say hi and drop when you're dropping in. And if you're watching on the replay, likewise, please drop me a little note I love to read your comments and check back in with you so the first card we're going to do is this one it features the amazing silhouettes stamp set this nice large tree image here and we're going to do somewhat of a rainbow coloring onto it this is a perfect technique for using with a very full-on image so in, in this case the color goes on this grayed area that you see here so when you see this stamp set in the catalog it's the grayed out areas where your ink is going to be applied and this is simply the um, technique of marker to direct a stamp that's what we call it let's pull out the stamp first and there are dies for this, there were dies though, a little different. Tuck that aside. And I've got this, this block, which is size I. And that fits on there nicely. Alrighty, and I'm using just plain basic white cardstock to do my stamping on. And I'm going to pick out from the Bright's Stamp and Markers collection. I printed, people ask me this all the time, I did print these labeling uh, case, case labels uh, from BevAdams.com and she does all kinds of organizational um, helpful tips and things. So absolutely uh, pop on over there to see her. Hi Deb, nice to see you. Yes, it is a pretty card and they just slide into our regular cases. So how I keep my markers is I keep them by color family and I put them in uh, in the case here with the cover. So I was going to use Pacific Point to replicate this gorgeous grape, melon mambo, um, mango melody, Daffodil Delight and Bermuda Bay. So six different colors. I tried to do the whole rainbow thing, but I, I found that my along this, I was going to have too little of each color showing. So I just thought I'd stick with six colors that went, I think, nicely together. So starting at the top and keeping them in the same order. There we go. So with our stamp and write markers, this, as I mentioned, is the direct to stamp technique. You'll notice with our stamp and write markers that there is a dark or sorry, a thick line on one end and a thin line on the other because the caps are exactly the same. The thick end indicates that's the brush tip. The thin line here indicates it's more as a writing tip. So in all cases, we're going to be using the thick edge. I usually use the, the brush end. I don't often actually use, unless I'm writing in a card, uh, will I use the other end? So that's just me. Basically, this technique works really nicely on a red rubber stamp, what we call a cling stamp. If you're trying to do this on a photopolymer stamp, the ones you can like literally see through, may not achieve the same results. Sorry, there's a little hair there I just wanted to remove. So I'm going to take my marker and literally rub it across. Hi, Valerie. And it's going to add ink onto those grayed areas I showed you on the stamp. Let me just pull the case back out here. Those grayed areas, the white is going to come through as just clear or whatever the cardstock is you're working on. So we'll do some gorgeous grape. It's okay if you overlap. You just, if ever you are overlapping, you wanna go a little bit lighter onto dark. 
excuse me, I said that backwards. Um, you want to take a darker color and, and add a lighter onto it if you're mixing the colors ever at all because you don't want to take your stamp, uh, your, your marker and uh, have it contaminated with another color. And now mango, nope, melon mambo. I'm having trouble tonight. I have been struggling a bit with uh, vertigo episodes since last week, so uh, I'm a little bit off my mark, let me tell you. All right, I may not have added enough color, but that's okay. This mango melody looks a little orangey when it goes on too. It has that tint to it. So that's kind of nice. I might be able to get a seventh color in here, actually. And then going ahead with the Daffodil Delight. Here we go. And you're probably wondering why you're putting it on there. Isn't it going to dry up? Well, I'm going to show you how we get around that. So yeah, I think I can add another color in here. Let's grab uh, another light. Let's go with um, Calypso Coral. Or, no, sorry, it's Coastal Cabana, Coastal Cabana. And just add this here. It's similar shade to Bermuda Bay, but that's all right. And then we'll add our Bermuda Bay to the bottom. And I will show you how we re-moisten the stamps so that it will take the color and sort of reactivate the color, if you will. So obviously, if you're going to do two or three of these, or multiples, you're going to have to add the colors each time. And I would recommend that what you do is clean the stamp and start over again, because actually hitting those lines is going to be a bit tough. So you can hear me huffing on it. You're just breathing onto your stamp to re-moisten it and reactivate the color. And then I'm going to try to position this best I can on the left hand side press it down and I want to press well so even if you had your stamparatus you're not going to be able to get this to line up really really well because uh, getting you don't have a defined line where you're adding the color so you just want to press down really really well and that turned out quite nicely so that coastal cabana is quite a bit like Bermuda Bay, but there's just a little bit of a change there. And that's how you do this. And in a similar vein, I'm going to take this now retired stamp, which I didn't realize when I was designing these ones uh, that this one would be, but I do like this You Matter to Me or Love Changes Everything would work as well. Uh, I'm going to just use You Matter to Me because it fits nicely in the corner that stamp with a couple of my colors again direct to the stamp we're going to put matter in Bermuda Bay and when I do this I tend to go uh, to the outside edge so that when I flick it kind of off the edge I'm not risking getting the color on the next letter or image so I tend to rotate my stamp so that I'm adding the color out to one side. Uh, maybe some of this on the U. So then I'll rotate it this way so that I start from the inside on the letter U from the word U. And gorgeous grape. And this is okay. We're going either side because it's the only thing in this row. So we're not likely to have that meld in. So once again, once we've got our ink on there, we're going to moisten it with our breath. And you can actually see that your block will get um, the moisture on it. You'll see it very visibly there. And I'm going to stick this in the bottom corner. You matter to me. And that turned out quite nicely. So couldn't you see doing some beautiful rainbow cards for Pride this month? That would be perfect. Totally. So I'm just going to clean these up as I go, you know, because we like to do that in our stamps as we go. I like to put them back in the stamp case. If I leave them out on my table, heaven knows what they're going to affix themselves to and where they're going to end up. So I like to just put them back. I'm going to miss this one. I kind of like this one and didn't really use it as much as I wanted to, but I'm going to keep it in my stash. 
and this will go back. This one I'm not likely to lose, but let's put it back in its case anyway, right? So we're going to dress this card up a little bit with, let's see, we're going to need another stamp from here for the next technique. We're going to dress this up a little bit with some of this really pretty mesh wire, metallic mesh ribbon, I guess they're calling it. And we've had this around for a while. It came out sort of Halloween-y, but I quite like it. It adds that shimmer of color on something that you, so you don't have to add a whole lot of extra color in the way of like embellishments and such. I find that it just, just adds that shimmer and sparkle that I'm usually going for. So this one here, I kind of pulled over to the side. This time I'm going to have the knot land on the tree. I'll trim it a wee bit. There we go. And then I have a card base, Bermuda Bay. So normally I would add a piece of white on the inside. So when I'm going to write on my card, then I'm all set to go with a white on the interior. And that's where I would use my marker and I would use the thin end and maybe right on the inside, something to coordinate with it. We're gonna put some dimensionals on this that will pop it up a little bit. And then this card will be done. So that's our first one using the direct to stamp and you want to keep it as a recap. You want to keep it to your cling stamps, your red rubber stamps, and you also want to be sure to have something that's a full on image. And that way you get the most out of it. Okay, whoops, Daisy. This is going down a little bit cockeyed. Let's get this straightened out here. There we go. Lovely. And then we'll add some rhinestones because I think they go nicely with this. Not red rhinestones, regular rhinestones. Regular rhinestones. And we'll add a couple of those in the corners. And wow, we've got a pretty card that's done pretty darn quick, I must say. There we go. Oops. One, two, three. And voila, one card finished. Now, the next one I'm going to do is something I did on a little bit of scratch here, and then I'm going to do this on a full card and share that with you. This is the butterfly stamp from Amazing Silhouettes. So you really almost can't see it until you see it against more of a background. So we'll stamp this guy, get our pink bits out of there. This time I'm gonna do it on a circle. I'm just gonna put my scratch paper underneath in case I go over the edge. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna ink it up. This time I'm gonna use my in color ones. Oh, those are the brights. Where's the in color? Here they are. I am using Fresh Freesia and I think I think I'm going to use the Orchid Oasis as the contrasting color. So we're going to do direct to stamp, same thing we just did, and we're using white, basic white cardstock. So I'm going to add this all over on the raised image of our red rubber stamp. When you get a brand new stamp, sometimes you find it won't take the ink very well. You can always take a little bit of an, a very, um, maybe a used emery board and just gently run it across the stamp and that roughens it up a little bit. But before we stamp this down, we're going to do the thumping technique, which is basically just adding little dots. They can be dots, so these are going to end up being a bit more like lines of a corresponding or complementary color that's a little darker or mostly darker that you'd want to add. They don't have to be uniform. Uh, I think the idea is to kind of let them drop like that. I don't have a lot of 
luck with that. So I just hold it in my hand. <sighs> Gonna breathe on it so that we re-moisten it and then stamp it on our shape. And there we have a different look. We've got almost like a marbled look going on here with our one color in the background and our other color added over top. So this one I just did as a sample. Now I'm gonna put this card together. And sometimes people ask, well, how do you decide what you're gonna you're gonna do with? Well, I usually look at my scrap bin and see what pieces I have left over, and I build a card around that. That's just the, that's the down and dirty of it, folks. Nothing too more, much more um, thought through than that. Oops, I think I just had some ink transfer there. So I had some black that I cut out with a circle. These are some new circle or shapes actually dies that are called they're new in the new annual catalog here stylish shapes dies and I should yellow highlight them because I have them now um, and they come with a different circles but these circles are special they have beautiful stitching in them so very lovely so then I'm going to take my card base just a standard card base I've got a layer, hi Brenda, that I'm putting over top. And this uh, I've run through the stamp and cut and emboss machine with the um, embossing folder that is called Time Worn Type. Tuck that on top. It just adds a little bit of interest to the card underneath my focal point. Usually when I do techniques, it's really about doing the technique and not so much the card assembly. But it's always nice to see a finished card, isn't it? There we go. That one's on there. And I've attached these two together. And I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Did I have an idea for a greeting? I thought I did. I thought I had. Oh, yes, I do. So I also found in my stash, which gave me the idea for the colors to use tonight. This is a, a basic black with fresh freesia. These are the dyes that come with the amazing silhouettes bundle. They have, thanks, amazing you, which you can then turn into thank you. And it's just kind of a lovely little set. So <coughs> let's add this on here, excuse me, and then we'll pop this guy up on top. I think, I think maybe this will go directly down. There we go, nice big circle. And our butterfly showing. And then our thanks, I can pop up. So if you wanted to pop up your or your greeting, I suggest taking your dimensionals and cutting down a row of them. You could use the minis, that would work too. But I find if I just cut down a row, then I get the right size pieces. I don't have to do a lot of trimming or it's not too small. We also have some, this I found in my stash, right? But we also have some dimensional pieces or foam pieces that you can put on before you even run it through so I need a little small piece here oh, there's a small piece cut out right there I need that little piece for the T get that guy in there there we go and peel the backings off and we'll be in business That's, there's many other ways to use your markers, but these are some of the ones that I think you'd use repeatedly. You'd like, okay, I've got that. I'm going to remember that. Perfect. All right, and then maybe some rhinestones on here too. I think they go really nicely with these colors as well. Let's use some of the bigger ones, and we'll just pop these up here. And yeah, we've got some beautiful shine on this card. 
There we go. And then the third way of doing this that I want to show you tonight is, is this watercolor technique. A different one again. This is a frame. I'm going to show you the die. So this is a new set of dies in our annual catalog. And it is called, over here on page 173, no, she's not right about that, 171, Fabulous Frames. So you have this piece here, which actually cuts that white inner piece out. Same with the frame with the scalloped edge, and that's the one I'm using on tonight's card. And there's a, an oval, and then these edge pieces, which I haven't played with yet, as well as a tag. Sometimes we have frames, uh, or I was going to say framelets, but dies in our catalog that don't go with stamp sets. Fancy Frames is another one that works really nicely on its own. You can use it for different things. And so some of these we get we forget about, but they're great to look at in the catalog and see if you want to add those to your stash. Let me show you what I did with this one. I'm not going to finish the whole card. I just want to show you the watercoloring piece to this. So first off, we need to get a bunch of colors. So I'm going to stick with my brights and I'm going to go with Melon Mambo and Bermuda Bay, Gorgeous Grape, and this Daffodil Delight. So I have four colors this time. That's going to it's just, this is a real messy piece, but it's my, my workabout with piece. And we need a piece of watercolor paper. This technique, once you're adding water to something, you need to have the watercolor paper so that it doesn't deteriorate. Here it is. So I've got a piece of that. This is bigger than I need, so you always want to start with something that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to need my heat tool to help it dry. That's all. And I also need my spritzer, which was here a second ago. There it is. So we have these spritzers that you can add color to or use them with alcohol, rubbing alcohol in them. I have this one marked as H2O only, so I know this only has water in it. And I kind of reserve it for that. So I'm going to start by just doing this very, very haphazardly. I'm going to actually get the framelit out. Where did the go now? So I have a, a sense of the sizing of it. Because my piece is a little bit bigger. So just so that I know that I'm gonna get it placed in the right. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to this. And it doesn't matter if I don't fill it all in. Then I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay. And again you can overlap them if you like. Important is using the watercolor paper. You can use, I've heard, uh, with our shimmer as well, shimmer white paper. I've not been uh, using that lately, so watercolor has worked for me. And I changed those colors up in order, but that's totally fine. And this guy on the bottom. You don't want it to be too sort of dirty brown looking when all colors meld together. You know how that goes. All right, so I've got enough color to cover off when I cut it out with this. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to take my spritzer and holding this sort of on an angle, I'm going to add a bunch of water to it. That's eight drops. And I'm going to just move it around a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to end up with a big brown mess. I want this to have different colors and a marbly, runny look. And I want to sort of get away from the lines that I had in there. So I'm even going to tilt this a bit. I don't think I have enough water on the top. There we go. And you'll see it starts to run as you play around with it and you kind of get rid of some of those lines on there and then I'm going to take it over to grab my heat tool 
then I'm going to turn this on and we're going to dry it this way. It just makes it go faster. So while you see that it curves, you add the heat tool and that'll dry it and stop the curving. It lightens it up a bit too as you go. So that purple is quite thick on the bottom. But as you see, it starts to fold the paper down or push the paper down. That feels dry. There we go. Now it's ready to run through, so the top is still a little bit wet. So then I would run this through, and I would have this piece come out. And then, I'm not going to do that right now because I want that to dry a little bit more, but I wanted to show you that my inner piece, I trimmed it down just slightly so that I get a little bit more of the black border showing through the card. And then on the edges, I've used some of our foam strips. You can use dimensionals. And I put those around to kind of raise up the frame piece on the outside. And then the inside piece, I stamped a greeting in a really dark black to pull the color out. So that's another way you can use their Stamp and Write markers if you haven't thought about that in a, or used them in that way before. And I've done a bunch of different other techniques on this in other videos. But I wanted to share this with you tonight. I hope you like that. I hope you give it a try and let me know in the comments how it goes for you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.